ever dreamed of creating your own classical Pong game? Well, you came to the right place. Because in this video I will firstly be showing you how I created a simple game board from a couple pieces of wood, to which I then mounted all the mandatory electronics components for such a game. Midway I will then demonstrate how easy slash difficult it actually is to program such a one dimensional pawn game from scratch. And at the end I will tidy up the wiring so that we can enjoy some really fun to play competitive 1D pong. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. You can get 24 hour quick turn SMT stencils for only $7 per piece. Use high quality stencils to simplify the assembling process of your PCBs. To start off I got myself an MDF board with dimensions of 800 by 400 by 10 mm and marked two diagonal opposing corners on the boards with a distance of 5 cm from the edges. I needed those markings for the two oversized push buttons, aka buzzer buttons, which I aligned along the drawn lines. After removing the top part I used a 4mm drill to firstly mark their four mounting holes and then created them in the MDF board. Next I grabbed a longer augment of solid wood with dimensions of 100 by 43 mm and marked 8 pieces with a length of 70 mm onto it. Through the help of a circular saw I then created the required 8 pieces, which were certainly not perfect, but good enough for my crude game boards. So I gathered a couple of leftover wood screws I had laying around and utilized a bit of super glue to temporarily secure the 8 wooden standoffs to the underside of the board, like it's shown in this plan. Once the glue was dry I flipped the board over and noticed that the middle section of it was not stable enough yet. To fix that I marked the center of the board on its underside, created another standoff and mounted it with super glue as well. After once again flipping the board over I marked 4 spots in each corner of the board, whose exact location you can also find in the plans for this project. Next I got a 9mm drill to create small indentations in the markings, so that the utilized wood screws for the permanent mounting of the standoffs can sit flush with the surface. And as soon as all wood screws were driven into the MDF boards and the standoffs, which includes the center standoff as well, the game board was basically complete. To make it look a bit more appealing though, I used some white spray paint to cover the front and back side. Once that was dry, I grabbed 8 M4 screws with a length of 25mm, which I used in combination with self-locking nuts to permanently secure the base of the big push buttons to the board. Now for the wiring I used a solid 4 wire conductor cable, which features a diameter of roughly 5mm. So I grabbed a 5mm drill and created a hole for the cable in each base of the buttons. After then cutting two lengths of the cable, I removed their insulation, snipped off the yellow and blue wire, removed the insulation of the brown and black wire and connected the two wires to the green switch of the two push buttons, which is the normally open switch. Then I guided the cables through the base holes and finally closed up the buzzers. And once I was done with my press tests, which let's face it is always awesome with such buzzers, it was time to move on to the LEDs. I used WS2812B addressable RGB LEDs, for which I firstly marked a horizontal center line onto the game board. And after counting up to exactly 40 LEDs on the strip, I cut it, removed the protective film of its backside and secured it with its given adhesive onto the center line. But since the adhesive is honestly not the best, I added a bit more hot glue under the strip just to be on the safe side. Afterwards I cut 6 smaller strips which featured 5 LEDs each, 
for which I marked two spots 5cm in front of the two buzzers. According to the middle of the button, I then positioned the first LED strip and afterwards the other two left and right from it. But make sure that the orientation of the data lines looks something like this. Otherwise, we would make the programming harder for us later on. Anyway, once I repeated this LED mounting procedure for the other push buttons, I used a bit of hot glue on all the LED strips ends and then used a bit of the previously utilized wire to connect the three individual strips into one longer strip according to the scheme. And speaking of schemes and plans and schematics and whatnot, you can of course get them for this project in the video description. Ok, moving on. Once I was done with the scoreboard LED strips, I drilled a 5mm hole in front of their first LEDs and also another hole in front of the longer LED strip. After then removing the insulation of three more cables, I pushed them through the holes from the bottom and soldered the brown wires to 5 volts, the blue wires to the data in pins and the black wire to ground. And as soon as I added some hot glue for strain relief, it was time to connect the 5 volts and ground wires to one Vago terminal each and the data in wires to the pin 10, 9 and 8 of an Arduino Nano. Then I added the ground potential to the microcontroller, hooked up the Vago terminals to 5V power, which did not lead to an explosion, brilliant, and quickly programmed the microcontroller in order to see whether all LEDs would function correctly, which they did. So, last but not least for the electronics wiring, I soldered the push button wires to the pin 3 and 2 of the Arduino and connected the remaining wire to the ground terminal. And with that step being completed, it was time for programming, which means I had to firstly declare the rules of my pawn game. What I want is that a light dot travels from left to right and right to left and the players have to hit their button at a precise moment to bounce the ball back. This moment will be when the last 5 LEDs of each strip's end light up red. The previous 5 LEDs will light up yellow and the rest green. The speed of the dot's movement will also increase with every successful counter of a player, which will make the game incrementally harder. A player will score one point if the enemy pushes the button too early or too late and the following serve then goes to the loser. The scores will be displayed by the two LED matrices above the push buttons and as soon as one player reaches 10 points, I want a small win animation before the whole game resets. And with the rules being established, it was time to write the codes for which I started with the creation of the 10 numbers for the scoreboards. As you can see, I stored a whole bunch of numbers in arrays, which are not just random, but represent the LED enumeration that need to light up in order to form the desired number. And through the help of the fast LED library, it was actually pretty simple to light up the required LEDs in the array which, as you can see, worked without any problems on the LED matrix. So it was time to write the actual game codes, which was certainly not that easy and took me around 4-5 to five hours. Generally speaking, I used a variable called GameState to create the 4 states of the game. The first one is when the game boots up but not starts yet. The second one is for when either the red or green button is pushed and the game starts. The third one is for when the green player has to bounce back the dots. The fourth one is for when the red player has to bounce the dot back and the fifth one is for when somebody scores. During those game states, I created a whole lot of long functions, which might look terrible to advanced programmers but for me, I am just happy that the game worked in the end. Also, I utilized an external interrupt for the push buttons, so that the game can react immediately when they are getting pressed. But if you want to learn more about the codes, I would highly recommend downloading it and going through it line by line. Anyway, after uploading the final codes to the Arduino, I did a test match with myself 
which as you can see, worked without a problem. The LED colors worked, the bounce detection worked, the increasing speed worked, the score display worked and last but not least the win animation worked as well. While playing I also monitored the power consumption, which never exceeded 1.5 amps, which means that I got myself a 5 volt 3 amp power supply, hooked up the Arduino to the Vago terminals, added a DC jack to the whole wiring and powered the whole system through that power supply. Last but not least I mounted the Arduino, Vago terminals and DC jack onto the bottom of the game board with zip ties. And with that being done my 1D Pong game was complete and it's surely a ton of fun to play with friends. I hope you enjoyed this project and maybe even give it a try yourself. If so don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.